let's look at balancing these reactions. What's interesting is that these appear to be balanced. If you look at just the elements, um, they are. But the problem is that the electrons aren't balanced because aluminum is giving up three and copper is only accepting two. And so we need to have them there in the right proportions so that we have the electrons not disappearing into space or something like that. So um, the steps to do that is to start with writing the half reactions. And the half reactions is where you look at one element at a time. And before I do that, I'm going to actually just come up here and decide which one is oxidized and which one is reduced. So when I look at this, my oxidation number on this aluminum is zero because it's neutral. And of course, for the ions, it's easy. Um, this one is zero as well because it's neutral. Okay, And then I like to say which one is reduced first because I see its oxidation number is going down. So copper is going from plus two to zero. That's a reduction. And if I'm careful about that, then I automatically know the other one, but we should check. Aluminum is going from zero, oops, not there, let's see, there we go. It's going from zero to plus three, that is oxidation number. Its oxidation number is going up. It's losing electrons to do that. So anyway, once we decide which elements are involved in each one, then I'm going to write the half, half reactions showing um, just that element. So oxidation, we decided it was aluminum. And I'm going to use the state sign. I'm going to be pretty specific here. We were kind of took some shortcuts in lab. So I'm going to show the state symbol. And um, it's going to And then for my reduction, the next step would be to balance the atoms. And that would be like if I had more copper on one side than the other. This is already balanced, and so is um, the aluminum. There's one aluminum on each side. Um, so this step we're not, I'm not going to use on our examples. Next, I'm going to balance the charge. And this is where I start putting the electrons in. I'm going to add electrons to the more positive side so that, um, for each one, so that the uh, each side is neutral. In other words, on aluminum, I add electrons to the more positive side, which is over here, and I'm going to add three because that way when I add up the charge on this side, it will be zero, and on this side it, it is zero as well. Um, to balance the charge on the copper half reaction, I need to add the electrons to this side. And now the copper half reaction is balanced. Next, I want to this part here, multiplying by a factor to get them balanced with each other. And so now I'm going to take into account that for every time this top reaction goes, it releases three, but this one only takes two. So what I need to do is multiply these by factors so that I could say that um, I have the same amount being released here as being accepted there. And to do that, I just use the coefficient I have on my electrons. I'm going to say three of these and two of those. So I use the numbers of electrons. And now I can see that um, I have two times three electrons, that's six, and three times two electrons, that's six. So the electrons are balanced. And I have them written down here um, that way, or balanced like we came up with up there. So the next step is to add the half reactions. So I'm going to add these, like they're algebraic equations. And when I do, 
anything that is in this has the same amount on both sides will cancel. So these electrons now cancel. One's a product, one's a reactant, so they kind of cancel out, and I need to write what's left. So what's left is the two aluminum. And that's it.